Aloha, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Jewel here once again, and I am back for the likes of not only for the Maxi Toys videos, but also welcome back for more of the forms of the Mega Man Marathon 2. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Mega Man The Wily Wars for the Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis. So, last time we managed able to get started with Mega Man 1 and managed able to actually take on the forms of all six Robot Masters ranging from Bomb Man all the way up to Fireman basically. So today, for this video is the fact that we're also able to wrap things up in Mega Man 1 portion of Mega Man The Wily Wars by able to go in for the first rendition of the forms of the Dr. Wily's Fortress. So because of that though, yeah I'm actually up for the challenge and we're able to go for it. So, oh Jeez, it looks a lot more different than he forms of how it does on the 8-bit counterpart. Because obviously now he cuts himself the actual eyes. And uh, also he still does the actual, uh, the smoke of the actual eyebrows as far as, you know, the actual eyebrow movements every time when he just, you know, participate for the challenge or something like that. But anyway, so let's go and get started with the Dr. Wily's Fortress, the first rendition of the entirety of the series. So, uh, expecting that this particular first rendition of the forms of that particular Dr. Wily's Fortress levels in Mega Man 1 might be a bit of a tough challenge, especially noticeable with tough platforms you have to come across into. And I think if I remember correctly, back in the forms of in 2018, on uh, the first ever Mega Man Marathon that we did back in 2018, that uh, Mario did somehow manage to able to got himself his first game over on the likes of Mega Man 1, probably because of how the fact that with this frustrating difficulty. But regardless of anything else though, this time around though, on this Mega Drive slash Genesis version, that thankfully I've got a lot of extra lives to my disposal, thanks to the forms of that luckiness of the forms of the actual pickups for certain items. So, yeah, you get the idea about that. So. Oh, okay, so I can just simply just squeeze for that little uh, gap there, so that way I can able to easily make it through it, so kudos to you. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, today's day is of course the uh, the 25th of August today, in this case in 2022 today. So it looks like about the fact that until next week, that um, September is going to be on its horizon. And especially noticeable with more games coming out for it, and hopefully we'll be able to actually see the new Nintendo Direct uh, schedule, specifically next month, like in most any other years from its uh, Nintendo Switch era when it comes to Nintendo Direct schedules release because obviously ever since in 2017, 2018 and especially noticeable in 2019 and a little bit of 2020 due to Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Direct and even last year in the forms of 2021. So we figure I was able to actually just to find out the next Nintendo Direct might be possibly coming until next month, if possible, just like in any other Switch errors of- OH GOD! That was actually really close, because as you notice, that we actually got ourselves our invincibility frames if we somehow touch the actual spikes, whilst unlike the NES version, specifically the original version of the game, that's basically, if you manage to able to get hit, like, in addition to able to get yourselves a knockback, but also that if you have invincibility frames with you, it doesn't matter if you're able to actually just to, well, get hurt by certain enemies and all that stuff, uh, you're still able to actually just come across into an instant death spikes if you somehow manage to touch them. Whilst in here though, basically though, it's kind of similar to the forms of how it does it in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, where it comes to the forms of spike glitches and all that stuff though. Like normally on uh, the original version of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis, basically though is the fact that there's that very annoying bug that you're able to come across into, which is of course the spike collusions. And because of that though, that every time you get hit by those spikes, Basically though, is the fact that you get able to actually get hit, hit by another spikes. Like, if you lose all of your rings and then touch those spikes again, it's instant death. Whilst in the forms of how in the, uh, the Christian Whitehead version of the game, specifically in the IRS version, basically though, the spike collusion has been fixed. So, yeah, I guess that's pretty much about it. That can be applied to the forms of the original Mega Man 1, compared to the forms of how it does on the Wily Wars especially as well. So yeah, it's just in interesting to bring this up, so... Oh goodness gracious, this is Yellow Devil again! Except now that, uh... 
it's obviously now in 16 bits, and uh, because uh, normally that Mario did somehow manage to able to cheese the whole way through for the entirety of the Yellow Devil boss fight because of the forms of that pulse trick with the elect beam. Well, this time around though, I'm just not able to actually do this the hard way, and because of this though, the actual movement of the Yellow Devil when it comes to able to actually getting its uh, separate parts to the other side is actually. Not gonna lie, a bit slower than the forms of how it does it on the original NES counterparts, which, I will say, this is probably is the easiest version of uh, the Yellow Devil in my opinion, just because it moves a little bit more slower than the forms of how it does it on this very, very, very too much speed from the likes of the NES version, so at the very least I did manage to kick his butt, no problem, despite the fact I've almost gotta get myself my perfect run, on that particular boss fight, because for whatever reason, I just somehow got hit by that last second or two. So, uh, yeah, that's basically all this goes. But uh, it's kind of a shame that I can't seem to able to actually use the actual, uh, the pulse trick by able to actually make the entire boss fight a complete joke. But, uh, regardless of anything else, though, I don't honestly too much about it too much. Whilst, if you ever play the game on the PAL version on the emulator or the original cartridge for it, uh, basically though, you come across into a significant slowdown, which, it wasn't exactly a bad thing in my part in this case, but there might be some bosses that are pretty easy to handle, while there might be pretty awkward to handle at the same time. So, a bit either way though, that's as far as I can say about it. So let's move on to Dr. Wily Stage 2, where basically, not only do we have to deal with the forms of vacational platforming sequence from time to time, but also we might able to come across into certain robot masters that we have to able to have a rematch against. Like, for example, that we've already taken down Cutman, and especially noticeable coming up, that um, I'm gonna have to able to equip myself, uh, let's just say, uh, the Cutsman's weapon, and because of that, though, we can able to take on, well, a leg man. So, hopefully we should be able to take him down, but, uh, I still find him a bit tricky to able to try to deal with, uh, a leg man, because, well, if you dare touch him, though, then it actually gives you a pack of punch for the sake of the forms of that damage output for myself, but, uh, regardless of such, though, if you manage to able to time it very carefully, then you deal with it no problem, so... So, um, yeah, like I said about the fact that today it is, is of course, the, uh, the 25th of August today, in this case in 2022 today. So, about the fact the matter is, though, is that also during the forms of it next month as well, that, uh, Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game that I seem to have a uh, really hard time with it, because especially noticeable that pretty much I'm used to with the forms of trying to go back onto, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, thanks to the forms of DLC, is now included. So as a result though, that, yeah, it's hard to go back onto Mario Kart Tour every now and then. Although I still manage to play the game from time to time for some bizarre reason. Well, that's mainly because of the forms of some more contents they added in. Although, to be fair though, is the fact that until next month anyway, that, uh, that game is about to be become three years old. Which, as far as I'm aware, I think I'll let, uh, uh, not only some toy sales were able to mention about that specific, uh, you know, the three-year uh, recap of the forms of Mario Kart Tour's release, but also maybe Maxi were able to actually mention about that until we decided to able to go back onto uh, Super Mario 3D All Stars by able to tackle through the third and the final game of that particular compilation. So because of that, though, seriously, for, throughout the majority of this year so far, for the likes of 2022 anyway, that uh, we seem to able to actually tackle through not one but two uh, compilation uh, let's plays that we've ever done. So that was actually quite intriguing, but. Uh, Either way though, I personally don't count the forms of the Sonic compilation games because obviously that uh, we already managed to able to completely done with uh although I would possibly like to able to tackle for Sonic Jam for the sake of Saturn. Well, most notably to able to not only try to complete the majority of the classic Sonic games, but within uh, CD quality audio, as well as the forms of some weird sound effects they actually include. But also on top of all that stuff though is the fact that with uh um, you know, the Sonic World portion, able to tackle for most of the missions, so... Anyways, here's the Mega Clone battle, which kind of feels kind of annoying sometimes, but luckily I did manage to find the easiest strategy, despite I rarely use the bomb 
uh, Bomb Man's weapon uh, quite a few times, but luckily we did manage to kick his butt by simply able to actually get a massive bomb explosion effect. So, there he goes, the Mega Clone. And I believe that we've almost nearly at the end in terms of that particular Dr. Wily uh, Fortress levels. So here we are on to level 3. So in this case though, this just seems kind of familiar because it might actually take place someplace in the sewers. So we can able to actually do just that. So yeah, aside from all that stuff though, is the fact that that's as far as I can honestly try to say. Although, apart from the fact that unfortunately though, we've only got about 4 more days left until this misunfortunate uh, news. For, uh, you know, the Wii U and 3DS owners, uh, like I said this before, since at the very beginning of this entire Let's Play of Mega Man The Wily Wars, basically, so even then, though, that it might be not a good sign when it comes to able to mention about some stuff like this until for later, so... Oh, jeez, some of these penguins just managed to show up out of nowhere, but luckily we can able to... Oh, jeez. I'm really hoping we can be able to get some more health pickups, so just in case I don't want to able to lose so many lives, especially notable for not wasting any of those uh, weapons ammo counts, because otherwise, if I somehow use it so many times, then basically that is the fact that I will be really, really damned and screwed, so... Although, on the upside is though, is the fact that, well, like I said, ever since and yesterday, that we're able to actually, actually access to save your, uh... Uh, profile or you save your data for the sake of the forms of certain progressions for, you know, Mega Man the Wily Wars itself. Although it's kind of weird that you don't able to actually save your uh, progress if you manage to able to complete certain segments of the Dr. Wily Stage Fortresses levels because, well, I honestly have no idea why they're going for that uh, specific decision, but because of such though, it's just the actual marathon for the sake of time, whilst unlike uh, Mega Man 7, well, usually, despite in Mega Man 7, you have to utilize the password feature. Whilst the forms of in Mega Man 8, and especially noticeable with Mega Man 11, and especially noticeable with Mega Man and Base, specifically the Game Boy Advance version of the game, I'm presuming so. That's basically, though, is the fact that you're able to actually able to have the ability to save your game until you continue your progressioning before you're able to continue on with the actual rest of the Wily uh, Fortress levels, so... Yeah, you probably get the gist of it, so... Anyway, so let's go and deal with this next boss right here. I was expecting if I was trying to able to use the normal Mega Buster, to able to try to take down not only one, but maybe like four of these things. But um, ultimately speaking though, it's the fact that I'm actually going to be doing this the different way, by simply able to actually use the Bomb Man's weapon. Well, it might not be that as effective though, at least I must be honest here. But regardless of anything else though, I think I must be able to actually easily be in, uh you know, take those guys down with, like, no sortable reason to uh, sweat, so... I've no idea why he's saying things weirdly enough for this commentary, but anyway... So we did manage to finish off with the forms of CWU-01PS... Uh, I think that's what it says anyway, for this entire boss fight. So in this case, though, is the fact that you highly recommend you're able to deal with the first three of these things by simply able to not only use either the Mega Buster or, uh the, uh, the Bomb Man's weapon as much as you can, but, um, uh, I think I should probably be able to save the Guts Man's weapon blocks for the sake of the forms of the final four. So, yeah, I was getting able to try to say things correctly, but because I was a little bit tired, but not just because of the forms of the actual time and stuff like that, it's because, well, I'm just a little bit hot at this point, so, uh, but luckily, you know, I managed to able to open up my window for some fresh air, so... But anyways, let's go in and uh, continue things on here. So we now move on to the final stage of Mega Man 1, which is specifically the, you know, Dr. Wily Stage 4. So because of that though, and we might able to actually come across into ourselves, well, assuming if we still need to wait for that particular moving uh, platform from the likes of uh, Gutsman's level, fun to come by, and uh, oh gosh, it's going to be a lot of emphasis on timing right here. There we go. So, here's the Saishi right here, like, if you obtain that, not only does it reveal your health, but also it managed to able to, like, uh, get your, uh, weapon energy back all the way up, including the forms of the Magnet Beam, so, uh, 
Pretty useful though, especially noticeable that that was before when Mega Man 10 was a thing. If you manage to play the game on easy difficulty, then you were able to come across into a lot of the Saiji uh, items from the likes of the Mega Man 10. Again, if you ever played the easy mode, so... But anyways, let's go ahead and take on the forms of the last four Robot Masters before we take on Dr. Wily himself. So in this case, we obviously deal with the forms of Bomb Man, which is obviously it's weakened to, uh, let's just say, like, uh, the Fireman's weapon. And of course, since speaking of Fireman, there he is right here. And obviously, the weakness is still relatively the same, so we just have to use the actual Iceman's weapon. Not exactly sure what these weapons are, I must be honest here, because it has been... A uh, very long time actually since I actually last played Mega Man 1 from not only on the NES Classic Mini for its modded, but it's also with uh, Mega Man Legacy Collection on the my Nintendo Switch, so... Oh jeez! Okay, there we go. Thank you Slowdown for able to actually save my life, despite uh, certain slowdowns might be able to actually hinder you for some situations. But anyway, speaking of which, let's go and take on Gutsman. In this case, Dr. Wily's favorite robot master, which as you probably already saw from a few moments ago, that uh, during the course of the, uh, let's just say almost at the beginning portion of the level, that's basically though after using the actual Gutsman's weapon to take on the, uh, to take out those specific blocks, that's basically though you see a whole bunch of those Gutsman statues, so yeah, no wonder why he dislikes that guy so much. So anyways, here's the forms of the final boss of Mega Man 1, which is of course Wily Machine 1, but because I can't deal with this boss fight with a little amount of health, so I'm gonna able to take my sacrifice, and able to actually decide to able to take on the boss fight for proper. But thankfully though, no game over screen so far, which I guess is a good thing, because unlike the forms of how it does in, like I said, back in 2018, that uh, Mario did manage to come across into his first game over in this entire marathon. But anyway, so let's go ahead and take him down for reals. So let's go ahead and use the actual fireman's weapon to able to take down this particular cannon shot. And now we hit on to the second phase of the fight where Dr. Wily did manage to show himself. And basically that is the fact that I think I should probably go ahead and use uh, the elect beam right here. And thankfully, unlike the NES version of the game, that that particular rotating... Uh, ball disc kind of uh, projectile attack that uh, thankfully on the Mega Drive version is actually a lot easier to avoid this time around because he's actually moving a lot slower whilst unlike the NES version of the game it's kind of annoying and frustrating and especially it's kind of noticeable because well I was expecting to try to dodge that but it's quite impossible to dodge sometimes but anyway time for the ending Mega Man has ended the evil domination of Dr. Wily and restored the world to peace However, the never-ending battle continues until all destructive forces are defeated. Fight Mega Man for everlasting peace. But yeah, that was it for Mega Man 1. Uh, despite it's a bit archaic, but regardless of anything else though, I think this particular version of Mega Man 1 on the Mega Drive is actually a bit easier than the forms of how it does it on the NES version, because thankfully we don't need to deal with the forms of that slippery physics sometimes, especially noticeable if you come across into those tiny platforms and all that stuff. And thankfully he, do he doesn't drop like a... Uh, like a blue rock of any sort, like a massive stone or something like that, because obviously that, even though it's hard to explain, because I know for the fact it has been quite a few hours since I actually did last able to actually done my recording session, so uh, anyway, so we see the credits, just like any forms of how it does it on the original NES version of the game, at least it's very, very short with this credit sequence, but regardless of anything else though, we made it back home, and everything else will be restored in peace. And now we can able to actually meet up with not only do we able to change ourselves into its normal rock, but also Roll and Dr. Light as well. So yeah, that's pretty much about it for Mega Man 1. So I suppose we should probably go ahead and say this right now while the ending's off here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Mega Man The Wily Wars. It's the fact that we're going to be moving on to the next game of this entire compilation, which is Mega Man 2, the most popular Mega Man game of all time. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later, fellas.